number. That is one. So look what he says right here. I feel like um, the good shepherd is shepherding the flock. Um, and it's by love, by remembering he's one God and remembering that he's love. And to think about what love is, there's no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. It's self-sacrifice. God's not going to send um, a literal son that's separate from him, than, that's separate from God himself to do child sacrifice and murder and shed innocent blood. There's no greater love than self-sacrifice. So it's like God's reminding me to keep in mind, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. His name's Jesus Christ. He's all of it. Um, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit are one. That is him. <laughs> um, and thou shalt love the Lord. He's reminding me that he's one. And he's reminding me to love him. And when I think, love the Lord with the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words of I commanded you shall be in thine heart. And teach them. So we remember that he's one. And remember that he's love. And when I think about love, you know, God stopped Abraham. It was a test. It was a test. And God's against child sacrifice. You know, and it was a test. So, so God's, Abraham was stopped from slaying his only son that he loved, right? So that's child sacrifice. So it's almost like when I think about this Unitarian and Trinity Jesus that, you know, um, well, I think about if it's not God, then, um, then it's kind of like Abraham. It's like you're just getting ready to go and do this child sacrifice and say, amen, and this is great. And then God stops me and says, wait a minute, your God is one. I wouldn't shed innocent blood. I myself came. Think of love. There's no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friend's self-sacrifice. Or did God send another? So the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Um, God, Emmanuel with us, the Father, was born into, in, born of a woman. The seed is the word of God. That's a miracle birth, Holy Spirit. Um, Mary and Joseph not involved in that way. The seed is the word of God. The seed, the royal seed, the royal seed. He purchased the church with his own blood. So he was a holy, he's a holy spirit. God is holy, God is spirit. He is the Father and he is the word. These three are one. They bear record in heaven. Um, so they're not separate where the Father sent the Son and then the Holy Spirit came down. You know, that was to bear witness. That was for a sign. The Holy Spirit, you know, coming down and John seeing that in the water baptism, a sign <laughs> for the Jews and to record it in a witness. Um, but the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. <clears throat> God, God in the flesh. So the father taken on the form, likeness, appearance of flesh, going to the cross, humbling himself, um, emptying himself, making to being the servant. Um, there's no greater love than self-sacrifice. Laying your own life down, which is what God is, he reminds me that it's love. Not to go and shed innocent blood and have an idol stored up in my heart. Another Jesus that's separate from God, from being God himself. God can do all things. God himself is love, self-sacrifice, and he's one. So, he's, he's, he's one. He's one. He's a father to us. He's all these different things. Just like I'm uh, a daughter, a wife, an aunt, a friend, a sister. It's spirit, though, because those that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. Um, you're not a Jew or a Greek when in the spirit when you're one in Christ. Neither are you male or female in the spirit because you're in the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. So it's not about gender. It's not about flesh and thinking carnally. It's not about that. <laughs> it's spirit. It's spirit. But he's reminding me that he's gathering his sheep. Um, you know, he's gathering his sheep, the good shepherd is. And to remind me that he's one. It's not split up into three or anything else. You can't say the, you know, God's, um, the son isn't the father, but then in the same breath, it's like double talk, but Jesus is God. Well, the father's God, the father's God, have no other gods before me. So if the son isn't the father, but Jesus is God, 
well, now I have no other gods before me. He must be from Isaiah 9, 6, the son that is born, the son shall be given. God gave, God loves his son. The father loves his son. He gave his love. He gave himself. He gave his word because the word was made flesh. The word God sent. And Jesus said, I came not in my own words. Um, he speaks the things that he hears when he was with his father. Well, in John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the father and then the word with God, he hears and speaks whatever he speaks and does whatever he hears from his father because the word with God was with the father. But there's only one word. It's just how God's explaining it. And, you know, um, yeah, he's reminding me what love is. So when I think about love, self-sacrifice, because we're supposed to offer ourselves, our bodies as a living sacrifice. I'm not going to go send somebody else who's not me. God can do all things. He's the Father manifest as the Son of God in the likeness, appearance of flesh, however that works. But that's what I believe because it says that the fullness of the Godhead in him is not an empty shell. It is God with flesh. God walking among among us, just like he did in the garden. They heard the voice of a Lord, the Lord God walking. How do you hear a voice walking? And now he's walking. He walked among us again. You know, like Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He saw his resurrected body. He saw God. He saw the face of God. No one can see the face of God and live. But he took on the form of humble flesh. He emptied himself so we were able to see him. He made bare um, his holy arm so we could see his salvation. So now when you see the Lord, you don't live. You die to yourself. I die daily. You crucify the flesh like, like God did for us. Put to death sin and crucified the flesh. Um, so now... You've seen God. No man has seen God and lived. You see God, you die to the old. You die to the, so you die to yourself. I die daily. You're not selfish anymore. That's love. One God. Remember, it's one. He's one in love. Self-sacrifice. There's no greater love, he says. And Jesus said, Jesus said, I go to my Father. He's greater than I am. So who do you think laid down their life for you? It's one God. We only serve one God. He's trying to remind us this. <laughs> so nobody has seen God and lived. But in this form, he made bare his holy arm. That's in Isaiah. He made bare his holy arm. He made bare his, his holy arm. You were able to see him. They were able to see him in a flesh vessel. Now when you see God, you live unto Christ. And you do see God. When you've seen God, you know because you died itself. And it's a selfless kind of love. Not sending somebody else that's not God. It's one God. God's reminding me this. This is where I'm at. I just have to listen to the teacher. Uh, Holy Spirit is uh, the spirit of truth. But Jesus said, I am the truth. How can Jesus say, be the truth and the Holy Spirit be the spirit of truth? But then Jesus is also the spirit of Christ. So how can the spirit of Christ and the spirit of truth not be Jesus who says, I am the truth? It's one God. It's one God. It's love. There's no greater love than self-sacrifice. Not child sacrifice. Not human sacrifice. Not sending somebody else. God came. God came, All right? Uh, God bless you in Jesus. One name, Jesus Christ. He's called Counselor, Almighty God. He's the Son of God. And the Son of God, his name shall be called Almighty God. Prince of Peace, we know that's Jesus. <laughs> Counselor, that's the Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Hey, that's, you know, it's all wonderful salvation. Well, God did his love. Love is wonderful. <laughs> um, and he's called the Everlasting Father in Isaiah 9, 6. The Son is called this. Why are we separating him when he's one? He's just reminding me. He keeps bringing me to this. The Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love him. And I'm really thinking about what love is. What kind of love is God? And I think about God doing it. It's like, oh, I felt like my shepherd just, like, pulled me into the flock. Like, yes, I'm the God of love. You, you know, I found you. You're listening. <laughs> You're hearing me. He's been trying to tug me this way, this way, to go this way for a little bit. And then I'm a forgetful hear hearer when I hear, like, I'll be stuck in a falsehood maybe for a minute or be entertaining it. And then I'll, it's not sticking though, because <laughs> then I'll remember what, what I'm being shown. It's almost like I learn something every time I go, I guess I learn something. It's like he's showing me something. Like I would have never understood the idol, the whole Jehovah versus Jesus separating them, Jehovah's Witness, if I didn't start following somebody, list, trying to win them who's Catholic, and then find myself speaking the same things they are. Um believe in it but then it's like god was showing me that's not it 
that's an idol. Um, that's not the right Jesus. And then I realized they say Jesus is not God. So then there was like, well, that can't be right. Yeah, um, you know, just going to listen to him. All right, God bless you, Jesus. Jesus bless you, he's God. <laughs>